I changed ring bound binders recently and my previous ring binder video talked about my standard size buffalo leather van der Speck touch me binder in black incidentally this is now available in other color letters leathers and you can also get a custom binder now made with the touch me configuration which before you could not do you could get bits and pieces but not the whole thing see my previous video where I talk about my where I talk about this binder well this binder is doing great it's buffalo leather which is virtually indestructible in terms of wear and tear hopefully you can see where the grain is worn flat a little bit just from constant use rubbing against surfaces and just me going like this and when I pick it up and put it down I'm going to do a real-time move into my current standard size van der Speck binder and it's a custom one and this is undyed leather which over time is going to caramelize and then turn a deep deep brown at, at a, a certain pace depending on its exposure to ultraviolet light and um, skin oils things like that yes I have an ink mark there already I'm trying to get make use of optimal light, so I'll try to stay out of the shadows. <sighs> See this? I did not have thing, I did not have this cover in my mind, in my hand, more than 24 hours, 24 hours before I had a nosebleed right here. I don't get nosebleeds, but it was a couple of months ago, it was still winter, very dry air, we turned on the heat, and for some reason, unknown to me, I had a small and short nosebleed right there. Well, I tried a bunch of things, and the final thing after, it was probably the succession of remedies that I tried to remove this or lessen this stain, but the final thing that worked after all that um, was a bit of a very fine um, abrasive facial scrub that I have. I don't recommend you do that on any other leather handbag or shoes you have, but this brought it into something I could live with. And then over time, this is going to just be a non-issue because it's going to get scuffed all over the place and you can see some marks there. You can see where it's darker here because it's gotten more um, more use and abuse this side and I do clean it every now and then with a very damp cloth. When I clean this leather I'm sure I try to make sure that I wipe down the whole thing so that the wear and tear is even. I don't know. Undyed leather is a bit of a mystery, and so I, I really wanted to do this with the 30 millimeter rings to see what would happen in, in my life if I brought something like this in. So you can see how it had my initials in blind embossed on the front. I don't know if that's, that must be in more pen ink there, I don't know. Um, you have two choices in size, and I went for the larger, the larger point font. The inside was a custom leather choice. You can also choose the stitching. I chose an acacia gray stitching for the outside and the inside I chose a stitching that would match this leather. It's Italian leather. It's called Brandy Italian. It's a deep, deep brownish red or reddish brown color. It's very durable. I can scratch it with my nail. Nothing happens. Relatively flexible. More flexible than the undyed leather, although this is starting to break in. And I, I just love it. I'm finding that I want a neutral color on the inside of my binders at least because otherwise it just, the edges of color showing underneath my inserts distracts me from the surface of the insert. So this is working pretty well. I have a little bit of color but it's still kind of in the neutral category. So I'm going to move my inserts um, from the black touch me into here and I'll chat as I go along. I'm going to turn this toward me so it doesn't take me forever to do this. And so I have my business cards here and I have a gold Ollie clip. 30 millimeter rings in gold, which is an upgrade and an additional upgrade um, along with the 30. I also bellied up for a fly leaf and I had another customization was to add an elasticated pen loop to that. I'm glad I did that. And if you've watched other Vanderspec videos, you know that you can customize even a fly leaf even more. You can add um, a slip pocket, you can add a zipper pocket to a side or other side, maybe both of the fly leaf. But I wanted to do this. I didn't want any more customizations. I knew that when I opened this binder I wanted this to have a very smooth, clean look. If there were a zipper pocket there, I don't know, I couldn't see anything. I couldn't think of anything I would put in a zipper pocket that would be slim enough to not distort the shape of the zipper pocket, if that makes sense, and I knew 
that if I put a slip pocket in there, I'd probably put something in there and, it, and I would lose that smooth, clean look that was pulling me toward getting a fly leaf in the first place. So, but the fly leaf, fly leaf, I'm glad I got that. I'm really glad I ponied up for that because I'm really, really enjoying that. So I'm almost done here and I've clipped together sections of my current setup that I want to keep private and also for the sake of time. Um, you know, I just wanted to have it go fairly quickly, as quickly as possible. And now I think I know why people don't do a real-time binder move because everything shifts and it turns into a real pain in the butt. Anyway, so basically the setup, the reference section where I have my A to Z tabs, as always, it is the same. That is just working so well and I am not going to um, mess with success. So it is the same. And what, what has changed is that on my week on two pages, and I still love week on two pages, I really, really do. I always go back to that. When I go to day on a page, I always hate myself. Um, the week on two pages is a little bit different. I'm using, and I don't know if I mentioned this before, if my touch me. I can't remember. But my week on two pages is now still DIY fish, but it's a vertical week on two pages. And the format and size of the columns is um, like reminds me of a Hobonichi and um, and so and I really I don't know I just love the Hobonichi if I did not need rings for certain sections that I have to carry with me 24 7 in my in a binder or planner I would be in a Hobonichi it is just oh it's just the coolest thing ever um, but it wasn't but I still have to carry this still have to carry the bone planner and you know I'm not complaining it's because there are some lovely ones out there. I've enjoyed my Filofaxes. I'm obviously enjoying this Vanderspeck. And what is my problem here? Hold on just a second, guys. Um, so, yeah, so this is working out well, and it really makes it fun to have um, a custom binder that is probably not like any other out there. And, um, but anyway, more than that, I really like the features that I chose. And I wanted to have, again, the experience of an undyed. Okay, so this is my emergency notification card, my Hobonichi template. Um, I have, and I'm going through my other pockets here, sticky notes. And there are slots for sticky notes up here. Here's an important difference, but the slots are, are vertical. Had I to do it over again, I would have turned these horizontal. I would have widened this. Here's a flap here you could put currency in if you wanted to or whatever. I'll show you what I do. I would have widened this about a centimeter or whatever it took to turn these horizontal because these sticky notes work just fine. And these are deep credit card pockets. Look how far those go. I really like that. But something like this, there's just no way. So it can't go in there. And so it doesn't make me unhappy with the binder, but again, had I to do it over again, I would have checked into the pricing of changing, changing this up a little bit. This is a cute pocket, and I like that. It is not as wide as this one. This one, I can go like this if I want to. Um, in terms of the pocket, this pocket here, Width-wise, it's narrower than this one. So again, if I had to do it over again, I would make this a little bit wider and turn these from portrait to landscape. So I have my miscellaneous sticky notes here. I like to leave this empty, this pocket, so if somebody gives me a business card, I can just stick it in there. Again, these are my business cards and with the new Ollie clip, that's a waffle gold finish. And so I have my random sticky notes and I've been sticking those no pun intended, right here. This is not a pocket, this is sewn flat. No customization on this side. What the customization I did on this side was to turn this from being sewn here into a secretarial pocket. And that's just really quick if I'm on the go and I have something I can just stick it in there. It's one more slip pocket and it's easy to get in and out of. This is, this is standard. Um, so customization so far. Fly leaf, fly leaf with a pen loop, secretarial pocket, 30 millimeter rings, 30 millimeter gold rings, and, and you knew I couldn't live without this, a 
back pocket. I've got to have this. And watch my Vanderspeck video that talks about my Touch Me. And it's, you know, I can't say enough good things about it. Something just fell on the floor. Oh, well, it's going to be there for a while. Okay, so what else do I have here? Okay, I have some happy, scrappy um, to-do list paper. And I can put that in here if that's just right. So if I need to make um, a grocery list or something. Vanderspeck card, it does fit in here just perfectly. And again, look how deep these are. If it were a Filofax, you know, in the top slot, it would be practically unusable because you put something in and it would stick like this. This one goes all the way down. It's just nice. It's just a nice little feature. Okay, pen. Both of the, the custom pen loop that I uh, ponied up for and the one that comes standard in a Vanderspeck is elasticated, which means you can put just about anything in it. I have um, a gel pen. It's a Signo. And I think I talked about this in my File Effects original video. It's uh, Burgundy Bordeaux, or Bordeaux Burgundy. I never can remember. Anyway, that lives here. And actually, I put that in here. And then I have uh, a Coletto that I use for a little bit, just a little bit of color coding. And that goes in here. And it is an elasticated pen loop. It's a little, little bigger than Filofax elasticated pen loops. So, which means that this rubber grip that is just such a problem in most pen loops just goes in there. There is some friction there, but as time goes on, it um, goes in there more and more easily. Easier and easier. To give you an idea, here is a fountain pen, and I showed this in my A6 Chic Sparrow notebook, my video just prior to this one, previous to this one, and it fits in there just fine. Um, and so that works. A problem, though, is something slim like this Sharpie. Actually, that's pretty fine. It is pretty loose. You can see, can you see that? I'm trying to stay in frame here. See how loose that is? Except, you know, if it has... A clip on the pen cap then I mean then you're good to go something like this pen this is also from happy scrappy FYI something like this is a problem because you know there's just I turn it upside down and out it goes so a slim pen like this would be perfect for a Filofax for most Filofax binders but for this if you wanted to carry a slim pen that didn't have a clip, you would need to talk to Vanderspeck about a custom pen loop that was narrow or elasticated narrow, something like that. But I'm not complaining. <clears throat> so, all right, so let's go on. What do I have in the back pocket here? Here comes a snap. Um, okay, so this was in the touch me back pocket. It's going to live in the back pocket here now. And I'm sorry if I'm shaking the lamp. I'm trying to do this as quickly as I can. One more thing. My family, they are out of control. Look at this. This was in my planner. I, I did not put this in there. I like green tea. Yes, and I suppose it is a good thing to carry around. All right, for the sake of argument, and I'll stick it in the back pocket. They know not to touch my stuff, but every now and then somebody will get a little bit bold and put something in there. At least the tea bag's usable. Okay, so moving on. So we have the Touch Me completely empty, and it's just, you know, it's just cooler than ever. So let's look at this snapped up, closed, and see what, we're, what we've got here. Now, the undyed leather is stiffer, okay? I think I rolled it up a little bit before I put stuff in it. It's got this thing going here. When I first opened this binder, this undyed was very stiff. And because the brandy Italian on the inside was not as stiff, there was a lot of buckling going around. And so when I took it out of the box and first put my inserts in, I thought, oh my, what have I done? And I looked it all over and I said, oh my, what have I done? But the leather, it's, it was so soft. And now it's still soft, but now it's shiny soft, if that makes sense. And it was the color of just like a baby skin. It was a nude color with just the barest, barest undertone of blush pink. And I'm sure that varies from piece to piece. It is a natural material and it's undyed. It doesn't have a finish. That's how this one was. But with the buckling, and you see there's still a little bit here. I've seen other undyed binders on Vanderspeck and they all have this here. And I think it's because of the sewing. It, that little buckle is at 
is happening right here where all of these pieces are sewn together and with or without a secretarial pocket. I don't know if I, if this were not a secretarial, would I still have this? I don't know, but I have seen that elsewhere. And interestingly, the buckle went all the way to the top pocket when I first got it. You have this little crinkle here that has softened and lessened a good deal with time. And it was so pronounced though when I first opened it before it just relaxed and started to become mine. It was so pronounced that I emailed Petra at Vanderspeck and the Vanderspeck family offers the most amazing customer service. I took pictures, I emailed them to her and she talked to me about it, worked with me and just said, well, it looks like this or that. She said, let me know what you want me to do. By the time we finished the emails, this had relaxed incredibly. And she said, you know, we have, with the undyed, she said, we have played with different sizes and configurations of the leather, but she said, we always come back to the design and measurements of the pieces as part of the original, that are used with the original binder, because she said it just works the best. She said, you know, she said the leather is stiff, and she's absolutely right. And interestingly, when I first took the Touch Me, let's see if you can see, still a little bit of, kind of a fold, something a little bit similar here going on. The Touch Me did that not as much as the Undy, but the same thing. I still had that little buckle here too. And I remember taking this out of the box, being in love with it immediately because I could go like this, but I thought, just for a minute, I thought, oh my gosh, what have I done? Because it was just wonky. It was, I got it in January, it was winter time, and it was cold, and I thought, oh my gosh, but it's absolutely perfect. Okay, <clears throat> so initials in there, pen loop here, pen ink there, nosebleed here, what can I say? But little pen here, but I love it. I absolutely love it. I am loving what's happening with it so far. And I'm just going to keep going and we'll see. I will probably, you know, I'm, I love this binder and it's, it's in the wings, you know, it's waiting, but I really enjoy this. And it, it was a, a total treat to myself. It was an investment. And um, so let's go in. So you saw me move my inserts. And so the vertical pockets here, secretarial pocket. And again, I love this smooth fly leaf. I love the fact that there's nothing on here to distract me and I'm really liking these days a really clean look when I open my binder. And I have um, I have this charm. It's a porcelain let's see if you can see. It's a porcelain lucky cat charm with the jingle bell that really jingles. And I got this it was on the ball chain. I got this in a, in a kawaii um, impulse shelf at a local Asian antique store. And I just love it. I had this charm on rings. I had it up here. I had it here. I had it here. Um, I kept it on the original ball chain. I changed it to a threaded, um, threaded little dangle. It kept getting caught right, right there on both sides to the point where I don't know, I guess it's because I had too much in the way of inserts in there. The whole thing would just get locked up, especially when it happened up here, and I just freaked out because there was one time I opened it where the chain was caught um, like there, and I opened it, and the ring, I don't know, it was just like just off a little bit because the chain was holding it in place. Anyway, like I said, I freaked out. So I said, okay, I'm not doing that anymore. I sunk too much money into this thing. I'm not going to ruin it. But I did want the charm, so anywho, she is living here right now, and I kind of like that. And uh, not really getting in the way all that much, and there's still plenty of room there for any pen that I want. Okay, so moving on. Um, okay, I don't need this anymore, because I have um, this in here. So be brave and take out the clear dashboard. I just don't need it. Okay, so dashboard with two-sided paper from my stash. Um, this is my capture section, blah, blah, blah. You guys know how I do this. And some of these pages need to come out when I have done or crossed off or delegated everything in my capture section. Then I rip out the pages and put in some new ones. <clears throat> and this clip, this Ollie clip, usually is attached the fly leaf in such a way that it opens immediately up to a blank page. 
So this is my capture section and I scrawl in this thing. I just scrawl and again I cross it out as I need to. And this is some white paper. It's not Franklin Covey, it's not Franklin Covey, excuse me, but it's a little bit wider. And I got this at a department store. Um, it was another brand of binders. Had a I don't know, I'll look at that, but it was like $5 for a pack of lined paper. I thought, and I like the colors, Ivy. Okay, so DIY fish inserts, I mean, they're awesome. Another Ollie clip, going through an Ollie clip phase, and this is from Ollie Block, um, store at Etsy. And I like to have several months, if not a full year of my month on a page insert so I can do forward planning. And but they were really getting dog-eared from me flipping back and forth. I could put them in the back of the binder, but I liked having them in the front because when I opened to the current page, everything it was even on both sides, and I was writing very flat. It just I just liked the way it looked. I liked the way it felt when I grabbed my pen. But I had it in a binder clip, and I, it was really getting kind of tough to turn because no matter how I clipped the put the binder clip on any edge from any position, it was immobile. The section was immobile. And so when I flip it, it would kind of tug at the top or the bottom of the rings. And again, ring phobia. So I used the Ollie clip and this is working pretty well. It's a strong, it's a strong hold, but there is enough give that when I turn it, these can move just whatever millimeter they need to in order to do an easy flip back and forth. So that's been a good choice. That's working out well for me. Okay, so my DIY fish inserts start stop at the end of August. You can buy 12 months at a time. When I My first set that I bought last year started in September, which means that going 12 months ahead, my current set ends in August. So I'll probably go ahead and renew and buy another set when um, comes around. But in the meantime, I have all this happy scrappy stuff. I'm one of those that's in her monthly kit club and I, I just love it. And so she sends different inserts every month. And so I use these for blank and custom, uh, customizable, customizable. Anyway, I made them my own and I took other happy scrappy stickers. I grabbed my pens. I grabbed my friction um, markers, erasable markers, and I just set up forward planning month on two pages. Just with pens, this is what I do instead of watching TV. I mean, I have no life, but I love playing with stationery. So you can see there's um, September, and I just use a different color friction pen for each month, just to be fun, and you can color in all of this. It's not laminated, it's a heavy, she uses a heavy paper, heavy gray paper in her inserts, and it's just so luxurious. And we have October, and moving on, November, and December. So this will help me with the plan, the forward planning through, um, through the end, end of the year, end of 2016. So, and I like to keep the used months or the previous months month on a page. I usually take out the week that filled the expired week on two pages. So I left a few in here just because I haven't taken them out yet. I need to update this. I need to go through this page by page, and and I do that mm, about every six weeks or so and remove things. But for right now, I like it here. Anyway, so here's January, as you can see, and some stuff I don't want to show. It's just private, happy, scrappy um, dashboard that came with this set of inserts. Every All of her kits have a theme. Check out videos on those. Okay, and so here is February. And this is just the negative side of those market dot stickers that I like to use. I don't know, I just thought it would be kind of fun to stick those on. And here is, what do I have here? Oh, I'm going to show you guys this. DIY Fish, Shang has at her blog, she has some free inserts that have been there forever and that she has kept up there. She's just, just a wonderful, generous gal. And this is a free insert, and it's a two-sided month on a page and you could use this for absolutely anything obviously. Well I made my own mood themed comic book and I use those Momoi stickers that I love and just as an aside I would love to meet the person that draws these stickers. I mean they really see into my snarky soul in a way I think that no one else does. And so these are Momoi stickers M-O-M-O-I. I've showed these in other planner videos and you can get them at Amazon 
and I'll put a link below. But I just picked a sticker that kind of talked about that addressed the mood of the day, maybe something that I did, and um, just used my friction pens mainly and whatever was in the pencil cup. So here I didn't have time, so just made it pretty and put an arrow if a mood or here I had insomnia these couple of days. And so that's why that's there and um, bye bye February. So, and then these are happy scrappy stickers here and here this strip is Momoi as well. So this was just so much fun. I just loved it. Oh, and the date stickers are from Happy Scrappy as well. If you see anything kawaii in here, chances are it's Happy Scrappy. So, so that was fun. Um, I really enjoyed, I enjoyed making that. And again, if I didn't have time, I drew lines and put an arrow in. Okay. So I'll just give you an idea of, this is a used week on two pages. This is from February. And I washed some things and I started making my own um, stickers, planner stickers. If you follow me on Instagram, I've had these up there about, about a month, maybe a little longer. I can't remember. But anyway, these are removable stickers. However, they're AV, they have a very good stick. And so because of that, they're not really removable. Um, Rachel Dunaway, and I will put a link to her channel uses these in her planner and she's just, she is so organized. She is a law student and it just has an incredible amount going on. And she incorporated these into her setup or something similar. And so I'm making these myself with Studio L2E stamps and stickers from another vendor. Um, oh, Mrs. Kim, Ms. Kim Creates on Etsy. And I'll put links to all that. And so these are just um, Copic markers. I pulled those out of my daughter's room. They were actually mine. I gave them to her. So what does that mean? I have, if I want to use them, I have to take them when she's not there. Um, just kidding. She really is very generous. But when it comes to the markers, it's like no man's land. So I have, um, you know, laundry, uh, medicine, schedule an appointment, dry cleaners, you know, obviously recycling, trash, blah, blah, blah. I use multiple colors. I have two dogs, a different color sticker for each. And uh, yeah, so this is a pretty active week. And so this looks like a hot mess by the time it's done. Um, and so here we go to March. I have these clipped together just for ease of moving. A little happy scrappy snapshot on my, on my tab. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Here's another, this is what that DIY fish free printable is from her blog. You know, it's, it's like this on both sides, easy to print, punch, and then you cut out and punch. Um, another insert, I use this as a project, to do project list, kind of a to-do list and just things that need to be done, you know, bring one of our printers back into working life. Um, happy Scrappy, and this one's kind of fun. It has a pocket in the back, and I mix and match themes, kawaii stuff from my stash. So here we have, this is from the Confectionery Donut Worry kit, both of these. Here are the Monster Kit stickers, and this is icons that I've been playing with. It's really getting dark, I'm sorry that I've been playing with. Um, as I come up with them, I put them in here that I might use in bullet journaling or on my monthly tracking chart with DIY Fish. And so this is just miscellaneous stuff. If somebody hands me a piece of paper with something to check out, I'll just write it on here. And as I come across it, if I have a moment, I'll surf the web and see if I can find it. And let's see, checklists, more detailed projects here, working on a budget there. There's April. Oh, I have this tuck, so I wanna show you guys. Here is the current week on two pages that I'm using. DIY fish, okay, vertical uh, week on a page. And so here, this is where I write, this is like my look for section. If I'm expecting something to come in the mail or become important within the next week, I'll write it here and then just cross it off or check it off as it happens. If, it's, if it needs to be scheduled on a particular day, to where it becomes a definite action item, then I'll do that here and cross it off. But, but and again, mainly it's a look for thing. Um, I have a tab, I have a, a sheet behind here. It's a list of things that I've ordered that I'm expecting. But if someone says I'm going to call you next week about whatever, I'll write it here. If one of these items is shipped, if I've gotten a shipping notification and I know it's on its way, I'll say look for Memoi stickers from Amazon. You get the idea. And so that's been working out well. 
And I have a totally new section, and it's called, with this little Martha Stewart label, it's called my Wear What section. And there's a couple things that I want to get. And Wear What, and I've had this before in my file effects from long ago video, and this is just a tracking chart, a running track, or a running list of things I've ordered, the date I ordered it, what it was, and when I received it. And so this side filled up, drew a line through, I'm using the other side. This is new, wear what? Um, happy scrappy paper that I embellished with some crazy hippo stickers from Etsy. When I can't find something, it drives me crazy. And invariably, it's something that I said, okay, that I use like once in a blue moon, maybe twice a year, and I'll organize something and I'll come across something like that and I'll say, okay, this is its home. This is where it goes. Well, anyway, yeah, you can label containers, but it doesn't seem to help. So it'd be like something like blue painter's tape. Well, if I can't find it, it's like I don't want to go to Home Depot. I don't want to buy another roll of tape. As soon as I do, I'll find the old one, right? So for odd things that I come across like that, that might not have an organizational theme, um, whatever, I'll just write it here. And you know, you know how it goes. The act of writing things down helps you to remember it. So if I come across weird things like, uh, let's see, okay, the, oh, the little kit that I use to make my Midori inserts. I, there are like three or four places I might be keeping that in when I want it. I want it right away. If I have time to make a Midori insert, it's a few minutes after everybody else goes to bed. So that's what it is. Oh, and this video is getting so long. But um, anyway, the, the rest of this is the same. And I did add another zip pouch, and zip pouch envelope to carry insurance cards and stuff like that. And it's in one of these clip sections. I've pared down this a little bit with some random stickers. And here are more of those planner stickers that I've made. Okay, recycling, this is when I need to take my lunch to work. Medicine, etc. blah, blah, blah. So that's it. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate every minute of your time. If you have questions or comments, uh, let me know and I'll put as many links as I can in the comments below. Take care.